I'm warm. I'm relaxing my wheelchair. This is my secret for Gay Pride Day, how to survive five hours. I don't have to be on my feet. So I've come here, and this may go on for another hour, and I get to sit here and uh, demonstrate. You know, here and there, a photographer takes my picture. And uh, I tell you, this thing is the greatest thing. George Heath, a, a career bank robber, retired mother for his mother that had Alzheimer's. So it's lightweight that I have a helper that can run up the stairs with him and carry it on his head. And uh, it really is amazing. I'm here to really to promote the fact that reopening Washington B. Johnson's case is really exciting. Anti-Violence Project is making the family demand access to her autopsy because they have a new witness all on her getting in a club with four straight guys back in 1990. And she had a hole in the head when they pulled her out of the wind, out of the water and the atrocities. The cops couldn't be cared less because she was a transvestite, she was a prostitute. You know, she was black, she was a nobody. Well, now she's a somebody because she's one of the founders of the gay liberation, I mean, of the transgender movement, and they're making a multi-million dollar movie about her. David France, who produced How to Survive a Plague, is making a movie about Marsha B. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera and how they found it. Star House, S-T-A-R House, Street Transvestite Action Revolutionaries. So Marsha is rising from the grave and her cause lives on. And I tend to see that it lives on. And it to me is the most important thing that ever happened to me in my life is I had this wonderful person be the house mother of my extended gay family. Most of them were prostitutes. She was a prostitute. My cousin Willie was a prostitute. You know, I had a decorator in my store who was a prostitute. He would go out, Willie would drag him out to clubs, and he'd tell me these stories about writing certain news by the river and servicing some guy. And he said, They get almost nothing for what they go through. And believe me, you would not hustle to survive if you're a male, if you had any opportunity, any kind of legitimate work. You get busted for being a prostitute, it gets part of your record. You're not going to get a job anywhere. I had a friend that got busted, who was actually not hustling, picked up in a roundup in 1980 with hundreds of people to clean up New York. Try to plead guilty to loitering for the purpose of prostitution, and it'll be wiped clean off your record in five years. He did that, and then in 1998, they asked you with the stock exchange, were you ever arrested? He didn't put that down. And what it is, it came up on the FBI records, because stuff is never wiped clean at the FBI. So here's a guy who had a college degree, was getting into the, and he, you know, and he applied for a job. He was going somewhere. Fortunately, he had computer skills. He ended up doing really good work with setting up computers for lawyers. So it didn't destroy his life. But what if you're new to the city, you go out today? You couldn't get a student loan or anything. You get something like that. That's ridiculous. That's just it's, injustice. It's also illegal to ask somebody if they ever been arrested. You can ask them if they've ever been convicted. Right. Not arrested. Well, I'm not sure. You know, it's not just question of legality because it varies by state. Because now I think it was, uh, who was it said he removed the box from the job which said, have you ever been convicted even? He, because even ex felons you get busted for pot, depending on what the crime is. Some states, party, you can get 10 years for having one joint. So you're convicted of a felony. What chance do you have? What chance do you have of getting a job if you're a convicted felon? None. You can't even vote in places like Florida. That's how they keep control these damn people. This criminal industrial cop complex. Flying. Horrible. Sorry. Sorry. 